Welcome everyone. This is Eileen Castellano. I'm here with the High Vibrational Life Telesummit and my guest today is Kazia Luckett and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kazia. She is an international best-selling author, motivational speaker, positive psychology mindset coach, member of the Association of Transformational Leaders and the CEO and trailblazer behind the Women of Contribution Movement and creator of the Pay It Forward series, Notes to My Younger Self. With over 20 years experience, inspiring, empowering, and supporting women through coaching and her work as an entrepreneur, in 2016, her life changed dramatically. Following a vision to create a worldwide movement and community of contribution and collaboration. Though through her Pay It Forward series, Notes to My Younger Self books, she coaches legacy entrepreneurs to help forward, I love this, to help forward as leaders for change with one aim in mind to impact one billion lives worldwide. Kazia is now on a mission to inspire all women to leave an, to leave an impactful footprint through collaboration and sharing their gifts with the world as she knows that united we are strong. Together we can make a difference one woman at a time. Welcome Kazia. Such a pleasure to have you on this telesummit. I know the viewers are going to love you. So the telesummit was something that I have created to help women particularly, but individuals, um, of course, watching this and, and, and taking a, um, a moment to really go through all these different interviews where we get to align our purpose to the true, to our true selves. So it's aligning your purpose to your true self, not the one that has been created through all the hiccups and all the different things that have happened throughout our lives so that we can actually create a life that is inspiring and filled with joy, passion, and overflowing with fulfillment. And so on that note, Tell us a little bit, Kazia, about yourself. You were talking in the bio, in, um, in your bibliography, in the bio. I was reading that you had a life-changing experience. Can you tell us what happened and, and how you got to where you were, to who you are today and where you're at today? Well, thank you so much for such a wonderful, warm welcome. But um, I suppose I was like most people. Life was just kind of ticking along and bam, out of the blue, something happened. Um, but I'd kind of already started a little bit on the journey before that, that bam moment happened. And, um, I'd run a previous business as a female based concierge business, employing 35 members of staff across the, the, the counties in the UK. And I had burnt out royally. I was in overwhelm. I was just completely and utterly burnt out. And I ended up just walking away from the business and spent some time rediscovering who I was. And I think you just mentioned there, not the person that society or parents or our husbands or wives want us to be, but who I truly was. And when you're in burnout and overwhelm, there, there is only one way to go and that's up. And um, I decided enough was enough. I was gonna change my life. And I embarked on doing a master's in positive psychology, uh, mm -hmm. focusing on what was right with the, the women that I was um, meeting on a day-to-day -day basis rather than what was wrong. And um, on Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas in the UK, um, I got up early, I think it was about five o'clock in the morning and is atypical of the English weather. It was pouring down with rain. I put on my rain jacket and headed out. And I must've got about five minutes out the door and all of a sudden these images and these noises and these questions and these voices, I started getting bombarded. So I, I rushed home, sat in front of the computer, started typing away. And I couldn't honestly tell you at that moment in time what I was writing, but it was really, really urgent. Mm -hmm. And at the end of probably about half an hour of writing, I had the idea for the Pay It Forward series, Notes to My Younger Self, and the Women of Contribution Movement, which as you said, believes that absolutely every single woman on this planet can leave an impactful footprint. And from then on in, my life has changed. I mean, you talk about high vibrational living. Oof, I mean, it's sky high, sky high. Now, what do you do, Kazia, when there's people around you or, or situations that you're encountering where you feel that your vibration is lowering? Because 
perhaps it's not the right frequency for you or it's not at the same vibration that you're resonating at how do you how do you do with that and and what would you recommend to our viewers when they're experiencing something like that it's so funny that you should mention that because um, last year we moved to Barcelona in Spain and as I was leaving, I actively asked the universe, God, Allah, Buddha, whatever you wish to call it, um, that I be released of those people that no longer made my heart sing. And it was amazing how quickly people started to drop off. And actually I've had an experience this, this week where I've been tested to see whether I really, really, really meant it. And I stood firm in my power and said, no, 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 no. These people bring absolutely nothing into my life. It's just a one way relationship enough. And I was very firm, very strong, and it was great. It just fell away again. So I think it's, it's making sure you surround yourself with like-minded people, people that have really got your back, that fully understand what it is that you're going through or possibly will go through in the future. And they're there cheering you on every step of the way. That's a, that's a fabulous answer. I love that you can do that. And I love that you have the insight and the awakening to be able to do that. And some of our listeners may not feel that they're already at that level because we want to help them all step into this. And so when, when clients or, or individuals are, are telling me things like, I just feel bad, I feel guilty letting go of that friendship, or what if it's a family member and you know, they're gonna see them during the holidays, the hol- holiday seasons are coming up here in the States, and how do you recommend or how can, how can you help them not feel guilty or feel that what they're doing is something not only powerful for them and themselves, but also when we're, when we're setting people aside, we're also, we're, we're stepping into our own truth. Like you said, this is part of the essence of who we are and that's what makes us feel good. So what recommendation would you give our viewers today on how to manage the emotions of feeling guilty or feeling sorry for them or feeling bad? And what would you, what would you tell them? I think most most women that I speak to, um, the reason that those feelings are coming up is because we are not used to putting ourselves first. No. We're used to putting other people's feelings and, you know, thinking about everybody else but ourselves. And I know full well, as I, as I said earlier, you know, I burnt out because I didn't even figure on my list at all. You know, when you have your list of things that are important to you, I had my clients, I had my staff, I had my family, I had my friends, and then somewhere right at the very bottom was me. And by the time I got to, to me at the bottom, there, there just wasn't enough energy for me to be able to do anything. And um, I've had some family members where I've had to say, do you know what? is this a healthy relationship for me? And don't get me wrong, it is hard. But if you know your non-negotiables, and my non-negotiables is any relationship that I step into has to be a two-way. Now, that two-way isn't like this all the time. Sometimes somebody gives more and then back. But if it's, if it's always like this with me giving more, then it's not a healthy relationship. And I know I deserve more as I know my clients and your clients deserve to be at the top of their priority list and to have that healthy relationship. So what would be some of the symptoms that you can describe when you're in that, in, in that high and low where you feel like you've got to come down to meet where they're at or you feel like your energy is being pulled somehow? What, what symptoms and what remedies do you have for those symptoms? I think there's such a a huge amount of symptoms, but the main one for me is sickness. Um, But that's probably more of a personal thing to me. But I I, I know many people um, experience this when they're out of alignment, they get sick, you know, and it might start off with a cough or a cold. And, you know, you you can just tell when you're out of alignment. Um, And also, if it doesn't feel good, then it's probably not quite right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a difference between coming out of your comfort zone and feeling fear um, to take you to the next level. But if we're talking relationships here and even the thought of picking up the phone and speaking to that somebody or having them turn up at your house makes you feel yucky, 
then the chances are it's not good. Um, and I would be asking yourself, you know, what is it about that individual? Are they being in your life to show you something? Because quite often what we see in other people we don't like is often within ourselves. Yes. Or is it a repeating pattern that's happening time and time again that will keep repeating until we wake up and go, enough's enough. We're not going to do this anymore. Yes, I, I'm in complete agreement with you. And it's interesting because with our children or other people's children, even as, as teachers sometimes when we're teaching our students, we, we teach them that if something doesn't feel right, then they need to go and tell an authority or they need to tell their parents, right? Because it doesn't feel right. So we're counting on our children and we were once children ourselves to have this, this idea that if something doesn't feel right, that it's because there's something wrong and we want to listen to that inner voice, yet we get a lot of conflictual information because later we're told maybe that inner voice is not so good anymore. And so we get a lot of these conflictual messages from, from our upbringing and from growing up and from our parents and authorities in our, in our lives. And so if we as children knew when something didn't feel good or something was off or something wasn't right, then as adults, we want to tap into that same inner voice that was also there and is still with us that is telling us mm, there's something wrong with that relationship or maybe maybe it is time to step back or give it a little bit of a distance and i know when i was working with couples and relationships it was about helping them you know what just take a time off it's okay to take a time off and reflect and step back and watch what happens and what kind of what parts of the dynamic are good for you and then which ones are not serving you anymore so mm -hmm. The other thing with working with women, which I know that we both do, and, we, and we, we wanna help women have an impact and leave legacies because I feel that we all bring something so beautiful into the universe, is like you said earlier, the difficulties of saying no. Sometimes that's so hard for us, yet we say no to ourselves all the time. All the time, all the time. So has that ha that's happened to you also, Kezia? All the time, all that it used to, all the time. Yes. And it's interesting what you were saying about children understanding what's wrong. But yeah. I, I, I was thinking about children recently, but we teach children from a very young age to put others' feelings first. You yes. know, a child might be happily playing around with a toy, and then another kid will come over, and the mum will go, Share. And right. it's like, Well, actually, I'm in my joy, I'm in my bliss. Why should I share? Yes. Or then they'll go, Well, no, let's give it to so and so so they can have have a go and you, I'm all for sharing the joy but actually we're already teaching kids at a very young age to you know hand over that bliss and joy because somebody else's joy is more important than our own and um, yeah don't get me wrong we all go through those phases where we we do tend to put others before our needs but learning myself and being able to teach my own two children but self-love has to be the number one. It has to be the most important thing. And my little boy, he's 10, and he will often say to you, say to me, Mommy, I love you. And I'll go, I love you too. Mm -hmm. And he'll go, but you love yourself more, don't you? And Aww. I go, yes, I do. And, and do you love yourself more? And he goes, yes. And, you know, for some parents, that might seem really strange. But if we can't teach them to yeah. love themselves first then we're setting them up in the future to be unhappy in one way or another. Yes. And those are great points that you bring up because absolutely so many times we want our children to love themselves. I have four myself and I, I want everything, but I, I want them to love themselves over everything else. But I also recall, like you said, it's about sharing. It's about giving it all away and it's about being good. And how, how do we define good is by, by just that, by, by making sure that other people are taken care of, but then we give them the conflictual message. Okay, so give them, but keep some for yourself. But then if you keep it all to yourself, then that's bad too. And so I believe that we all come with a lot of conflicting messages that have impaired our own identity or stepping into our own identity. And so today we have these powerful words where everybody is talking about purpose, and I've got to be on purpose. And how do I get on purpose? And I even have clients sometimes call me with anxiety. What if I don't know my purpose? You know, can something bad happen to me? And so part of purpose, I believe, is really going back to that inner self, that, that inner voice, that part of us that, that 
knows that feeling bliss and feeling joy and happiness is good for us. And that when we can step into doing that, whether it's the right career for us, whether it's the best relationship for us, when we're in that space, then everything that we offer, everybody that we love and everybody that we work with comes from really positive, high vibration. But we've got to do the work first. And the work really starts with the self-love that you were talking about. So how do you help, Kazia, people that are coming to you for help with purpose and, and passion? How do you address that? Well, it's interesting that you say that because um, obviously I run the Women of Contribution movement mm -hmm. and many women come to me for um, that very reason, finding their purpose, finding their passion, understanding what their, their, their true contribution and purpose mm -hmm. has been for them being put on this planet. And... Um, I always hear them say, well, I've got nothing to contribute to the world. And I just keep saying to them, if you step into the person that you were put on this planet to be, that U-shaped hole that only you can fill, you're already contribution enough. And, um, I, you know, from my work um, doing my dissertation for my positive psychology master's, you know, I, I developed a, a process called Notes to My Younger Self, which, which basically uses people's past to roadmap what they're meant to be doing in the future. Ooh, and yeah. everything that we ever need to know about our purpose is always in those pivotal moments, those dark moments that we've probably gone through in our lives and come out the other side. It's those learnings that set us on the right path for us to find our purpose and truly make a difference in the world. That's so beautiful. And you're absolutely right. I, I, I can see where, where that's going to make such a powerful and it makes such a powerful impact when we just go back to what we already know, right? We don't need to reinvent anything. We, we've got the knowledge within us and it is about opening up our hearts and really tapping into giving us permission to just go there without making it too much more complicated or, or having to go into anything complex. So how do you help our viewers fill in this space where they want to be in a life that is overflowing with joy and peace and passion. What recommendation would you give them from where you came from and all the, the parts of your journey that were your turning points and your defining moments? How do you help them recognize or step into that so that they at least have an idea that it's possible, right? Because if you did it and I've done it, if we did it, they can do it too, right? Yeah, most definitely. And, and I think there's that, especially with social media these days, people look on social media and they do this comparison thing. And, you know, then they look at people and think, oh my God, you know, they, they've got it. They're living the life that I want. Um, and I think there's two things to say there is firstly, are they really or are you just seeing snapshots of the good time? Right. Um, and secondly, we can't compare our first step with somebody else's 100th step. Um, but for, for, for me, I truly believe that the moments that I felt that I was falling apart, actually everything was falling together. Yes. You know, whether it was the postnatal depression with my son, whether it was the overwhelm with, with my business and, and walking away from my business and a variety of different things that have happened in my life. Yeah. Those are really pivotal parts of my journey for, for me to get where I am. And it's also being aware of the signs that are out there that you are on the right path. And I think we, we've been led to believe in this society that the destination is the, the, the main aim of the game. It's just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy when, I'm going to be uh, successful when, I'm going to be you know, in love when I've lost the weight, I've gained the power, whatever it is. But actually, we're missing a trick. It's the journey to get to the destination where all the magic's held. Yeah. And if we can just sit back and go, I am where I am meant to be at this moment in time, then everything's perfect. So I love that you brought that up, Kazia. Um, there's something that I wanted to bring up also is in what you're saying, the power of acceptance and accepting where we're at in our lives. And like you said, if, if you're a hundred steps ahead and I just started my journey, it's going to be impossible and improbable that I'm going to be at your level and, and ready to do what you're doing because you've already been on the journey for, for a lot longer than I have. And so I'm, I'm encouraging viewers 
to really, really accept where they're at in the process and wherever that they're at is perfectly fine for them, right? So we, we get to accept, like you said, let's, let's have the awareness of what we're doing, where we're going, of what we want to feel, what we want to create, the people we want to keep, the people we know are not serving us anymore, but then the acceptance that where I'm at is where I'm at. And we never, we don't typically put that kind of challenge or, or um, pressure on ourselves when we're in school. So a lot of times I give the example, if you're in ninth grade, you're accepting that you're in ninth grade. If you're a senior and you're ready to graduate, you're accepting that you're a senior. You're not, you're not thinking, oh, I should be back in sixth grade or I should be graduating college. So in school, I, I want to give that example because I find that since we've all gone to some schooling, to some levels of education, we accept where we're at at the moment and we don't try to get in, ahead of ourselves and we don't try to stay left back. So if we just go into that acceptance mode and it's okay and wherever you're at is fine and it's the best place for you right now. I love that, that you brought that up and, and it really brought that, um, that thought into my mind that acceptance is very key in this journey. And the other point that you brought up that was very powerful is to enjoy the journey, right? So many times we're so focused on just the end result, the end results, like the goal, the goal, the goal, and we're not allowing ourselves to embrace all the aspects of the journey that are helping us to get where we want to go. So is there anything from your journey that you would like to share that you know that was part of the transition and that maybe it's something that you still remember today because it was that powerful for you? Well, it's really interesting because I have a lot of people that ask me about how the vision came in on that, mm -hmm. that wet morning. And I really, truly believe that it was about surrendering. It was about just, you know, relieving that pressure off my shoulders because I knew I wanted to do something and I knew I wanted to create a legacy that I could leave to the women of the world that would carry on long after I was gone. Um, but the pressure of that, you know, it's just like, oh my God, you know, I've got to try and come up with something. And I, I started using this rather than using this. And just being able to surrender and just go, do you know what? It's fine. It will come when it's good and ready. And that surrender Mm. And also, um, for me, it was about movement. I know this sounds really strange, but I get my best ideas when I'm moving. Mm. So when I'm in movement, whether it's walking or whether I'm driving the car, I don't know whether anybody's had this. I, 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 you know, I don't tend to drive here in Barcelona, but you know, I t used to have a dictaphone in my car so that those best ideas that came through, I always had the opportunity. But surrender, just surrender. You... We don't need to be pushing a big rock up a hill through treacle anymore. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, we're probably not in alignment. And you're so, you're so right on saying that. I mean, when we think about climbing a mountain, we want to pack light, right? If, if we're going to, if we're going to go and we know that it's, it's going to be something difficult, maybe it's the first time that we're doing something like that or, or going on some, some sort of a hiking trail. We want to make sure that we've got the right, the right luggage, the right bag, the right baggage for where it is that we're going. When we fill ourselves with so much that is not ours, a lot of times we're, we're just carrying um, a lot of dead weight, right? A lot of things that we just decided we're just going to overpack. It's not fun. It's not a fun journey. So part of all of this is to make it an exciting journey and, and be a participant of the journey. And as, as you were saying, because the, the, the importance of surrendering means to let go. Surrendering doesn't mean that you're giving up. Surrendering means that you're just letting go so that you can release and, and stop the overpacking and the over insistence of carrying luggage that is not, is not viable. It's not good for you and for your journey. So really, really being in that space of, of allowance that all of this is, is your, is your turn. It's your, it's really your birthright. And I can't even see it any different than that having a high vibrational life is is our is our is something that has come with us and not only for us to step into it but for us to be able to share with all those people that we love and i love that you have set up that program pay it forward and that you're doing this contribution work for women and helping them become 
great contributors in their own life. What inspired you? Because you could have taken your experiences and your work and you could have done many other things, but this is what you honed in and, and that's what you decided to do. So can you tell us about that? Well, obviously it came through as a vision and you're right, I could have just ignored it and I could have, you know, quite often I'd heard voices in my head and just ignored it and put it down to just, you know, overactive imagination. Um, I think it's because at the time I was, I was stepping into a space where I was surrounding myself with these phenomenal women, absolutely mm -hmm. phenomenal women. Not only was I seeing them um, previously when I ran my female-based concierge company, you know, the clients that we served or the, the, the staff that um, worked for the company. But I was seeing these phenomenal women and I just knew that we all have that inner desire that inner kind of whisper that starts to get louder and louder normally around kind of midlife time and that can be anywhere between 35 and 65 you know I think we've all been there and um, sometimes we can push that inner whisper down and go don't be so ridiculous you know let's carry on with what society expects us to do but at some point in time it starts to become more insistent it gets louder and louder and louder until we have to do something with it and that was what it was like for me. I had to do something with it. And the Women of Contribution Movement believe, believes and still believes that when women come together to collaborate and share their gifts with the world, the world can be a different place. Yeah. And like I said earlier, so many women were saying, well, I've got nothing to contribute. Mm -hmm. And the Pay It Forward series Notes to My Younger Self book was all about, well, actually, you do have something to contribute. And the simplicity of a story can change somebody else's life. Because those moments that are dark, that you wish to kind of hide and stuff down that nobody can see, those are the moments that inspire empower and ignite something else in, in another woman so that she knows a that she's not alone but b that actually there is light at the end of the tunnel because so many of us go through those moments thinking there isn't yes and something resonated with me as you were sharing that is for me it was my my, my defining moment and my turning point was waking up in the middle of the night and waking up in the morning and this was happening very very often for me like you said that nudging was that thought that is this all there is you know in my life is this it is i mean there's got to be more to my life than this and it was that recurring theme it was that recurring thought and it was like there has to be more there has to be more and like you said earlier to the point that i was becoming sick i was having anxiety panic attacks i was feeling um, i was having kidney stones so i was i was visiting the er very often sometimes twice a month with kidney stones, which is a reflection of my own fear of this is it, this is, this is my life. And four children later, and it was like there had to be more. I knew that, that there was a bigger calling. And when we decide that enough is enough and that I've got to listen to that voice, I've got that nudge is there for a reason, we don't want to dismiss it. We don't want, it, it comes to a point, like you said, we have no other choice. But to listen, because if not, they're just going to slam us because we're getting sick at this point and people that we love need us and we don't have the luxury to be sick. No, no. So, and it's so funny that you say enough is enough because yeah. we're just writing the second or just finishing yeah. writing the second book. And that's my introduction. Enough, uh -huh. enough. Uh -huh. Because it does, it gets to that stage where we go, we can't yeah. do this anymore. Enough's enough. You draw a line in the sand and then you think, right, what next? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's been so beautiful having you here, Kazia. Can you tell our wonderful audience about your free gift? I can, I can. In actual fact, um, I'm gifting your, your listeners, um, Simply You, the Wellbeing for um, Women Project. And this was um, something that I developed when I was in overwhelm, when I had walked away from my business and I literally spent six months rediscovering who I was because I'd lost it. Like I said, I was at the bottom of my, my list. And it, it, it helps your listeners to get back to the basics of who they are. Because oftentimes when we get to that overwhelm stage or that sick stage, we've forgotten. We've really forgotten 
who it is that we are. So it's a series of videos and workbooks that they can work through step by step. And it's so simple because when you're in overwhelm, when you're at that stage, you really can't think straight anyway. So you just need something simple, simple, simple that actually isn't going to take a lot of work, but is going to have maximum effect. So my gift to, you, to your listeners really is just to remember that just by being simply you, you are enough. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Yes, we are more than enough. We're always more than enough. That is so beautiful, Kazia. Thank you so much for being on this wonderful telesummit that we all get to share and explore and, and give back and pay forward, like you say, and contribute to the beautiful women who are listening and to all those who are tapping into this High Vibrational Life Telesummit. Thank you so much. It's been such a blessing and, and pleasure oh, to meet you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.